Hello everyone, I'm Steve, Mark's working late tonight, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark, either welcome or welcome back, and happy Thursday. Uh, we're getting there, close to the weekend, so I'm looking forward to it, it's been a long sort of week. Um, I'm having an interesting sort of day, I took the day off, um, and Mark's working late evening, so I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm filming this early, it's probably around noon or one o'clock, um, no work today, just needed day to just, you know, I think... I'm a little more burned out than I was giving myself credit for. So I'm, I'm taking some time off as soon as I can accrue it. And uh, today is one of those days. So it'll be nice to see you early. This might come out during the daylight. Uh, so today for story time, I thought we would do something a little bit different. And kind of a flashback to an old video that I did. And also inspired by a creator that I follow. So... As far as the video that I did, a couple years ago, maybe, I did a video called Anorexic Mukbang. And in that video, I had a little bit of something to eat that was a sample of something I may have eaten back in the day when I was restricting my calories, because I have a history with eating disorders, with restricting, uh, with binging, with purging, a number of different ways as well. So I was discussing that and having my very humble 100-calorie snack. So that kind of brought it back to me. I thought I haven't talked about some of that stuff in a while. And my feelings on the issues mentioned in that video, some of them have changed since then. So I wanted to kind of catch up to where that is. Also, a lot of that video and some of the others are about eating disordered behaviors. Um, that's a little bit separate from the kind of thoughts I have just about food in general, about what food means to me, about what it has meant to me, what it continues to mean, about food being love and comfort and, and safety and a good companion and, and all that stuff. So I want to talk a little bit about that. The other inspiration is that I'm trying to keep up with Foodie Beauty for Saturday, and there are friggin' 20, literally 24 hours of footage, live footage, so far. So... In the interest of that, I thought I would have a little snack while we talk. I am not a mukbanger, by, you know, um, so telling a story and eating is a little challenging, but we're having a humble peanut butter sandwich and a little bit of a Granny Smith apple and a little bit of almond milk on the side. So that's that's what we got rocking and rolling here. So as as to food... Um, Oh, I don't do, I don't do trigger warnings. I'm talking about food. I might mention an eating disorder. Use your judgment. Okay. Um, I've all, all my memories, my memories are linked to food. All of them. It doesn't matter if it's a very, you know, small event, a, a dinner, a date that I went on. Or if it's a grand, like a wedding, or like when I was growing up, sacraments, I grew up Catholic, um, and those were often marked with like an event, or or a cake, or, or a service, or something like that. Um, any sort of thing like that was always marked with food. That was how it was noted. And it was a reason for people to get together and, and eat. Now, for a lot of people, I know food is, and to, it was for my family too, food is companionship. Food is a reason to get together, a reason to talk, a reason to meet with people who you don't normally meet with. Possibly other relatives you may not see all the time. So I thought, well, you know, so what? <laughs> but the problem is, as I'm remembering my childhood, as I'm approaching 40, and the midlife crisis is probably on its way, like, I bleached my hair again, by the way. Um, what's left of it? You'd be surprised how much it hurts to bleach your scalp. Or maybe you wouldn't. So, growing up in my childhood, the first memory I have, first two memories I have, involve food. I was like five, maybe, six, and I was at a wedding in Delaware. I have extended family in Delaware. And they are all gorgeous, successful people. Like, the Kennedys. Like, that's what I think of when I, when I hang out with them, which rarely happens. We hung out more as kids. They vacation near us. Um, and I went to a wedding there, and I remember there was... I don't even remember which cousin was getting married. I was five. I was sitting on one of my parents' laps, and they served chicken cordon bleu, and I didn't like it. I remember that. Of all things, I remember that. Um, what else happened during there? I remember getting lost in a Sugarman's store near us. Um, Sugarman's was like a an indoor mall... 
flea market type place. Well, at any rate, I turned a corner, lost my mother. I remember I was wearing a poncho, orange poncho with a frog on the front of it. And I ran the whole length of the store because I, I lost my mom. I think I was four or five again. And I remember it smelled like soft pretzels and cinnamon buns. Couldn't tell, the memory, I was terrified. You know, you think it might be a little traumatic for a kid or whatever. Um, I, I remember what the food smelled like. That's what I remember. Um, going through high school was the same sort of thing. I remember the dates I went on. I might not remember the girl's name. I didn't come out until I was in college. So I went through the motions of heterosexual dating in my teens. Talk about uncomfortable. But we did go on dates. A lot of trips to Perkins. I remember every time I ordered an appetizer sampler, I remember every sourdough grilled cheese, every chicken fingers, every muffin, every bowl of cereal, because I thought I was being cute and subversive by ordering cereal at a restaurant. All of it. I couldn't tell you who I went with. <laughs> I don't remember the conversations we had, which were probably meaningful and, and helped grow. Cause those two o'clock conversations you have with friends over coffee and cigarettes, like, in college or when you're younger or, you know, just kind of coming into your own are important. They're growing things. At least they were for me. I got more growth out of that than any, you know, hike of the Appalachian Trail. And they're gone. I, I don't, I don't remember them. I remember the soup when I was in college. Freshman year. First time out on my own. First time out on my own. And I didn't grow up in a strict household. But there were rules. And the rules were the rules, and that's it. So when I got out on my own, I was like, ah, I can live, I can breathe, I can do this, I can do that. Somehow I equated freedom with eating. I didn't gain weight because I was doing a little bit of speed. And so, I, well, ecstasy too. But I would eat, like, nonstop. There was a full buffet, and for some reason, binging to me felt like freedom. Which is why I kind of get when Foodie Beauty does her You Can't Tell Me What to Eat, You Don't Own Me little act. I can kind of understand that, look, everyone's been bothering me about my food intake forever. Steven, you eat too little. Steven, you ate too much. Aren't you going to lose any weight? Steven, you look too thin now. You should gain weight. All of a sudden, it was like, F everybody, leave me alone. I'm going to eat what I want. And actually what I wanted at the time was giant bowls of cream of potato soup with fresh baked bread. And diet, like, carb explosions, you know, Fantasia, is, is what I was craving. Made new friends, talked to people, um, had a lot of lunches, everyone's awkward, everyone's weird, but we're all trying to play cool like we know what we're doing and we don't. Um, you know, freshman year I had a thousand friends and then it whittled down to about two or three after the years went on. I remember what we ate. I remember the oatmeal cream pies that my, my best girlfriend stole from my roommate and was eating when he came in. I remember pizza after pizza after pizza from the place down the street that we would order. I remember my friend who I went to high school with, whose aunt gave him a gift basket with pasta anytime in it that you could throw in the microwave and boil. Um, I remember the Philly soft pretzels that a girl, that girlfriend's roommate, um, had brought to her from her parents. She was from the Philadelphia area. Vivid, vivid memories. I mean, I would not be good at picking out a person for, like, for a police lineup or for a sketch artist. Forget it. But if they wanted me to describe, like, you know, a croque monsieur, <laughs> I could probably, like, sketch it for you and it would be okay, too. It just became a fixation. I don't know why. You know, as a young kid, I can see where I got confused with some information and and just didn't get it. Like, I remember being very young and I'm, I'm going to say like five or six again. And we had had roast beef one night, like an eye round, you know, the one side's like all fat. So I think my dad in prepping it, cut the fat off and then sliced the beef and gave it to everybody. And it was sitting on the cutting board in the kitchen and my parents were cleaning up where my mom was. And I was like, do, do people need fat, mom? And she's like, well, everyone needs a little bit. And I misunderstood that and took it to mean I should eat this entire fat slab off this roast beef, which was about the size of three decks of cards. And I ate the whole thing. Proceeded to throw up during the night, actually. Uh, but I don't remember what the event was. I don't remember what it was for. Now, this is not to say that I've blocked out everything but the food. 
I'm, you know, that it, unfortunately that is kind of what I'm saying, but my priorities, where my mind focuses, the thing it goes to first is food. Why? Well, when I think of food, I think of comfort. I think a lot of people do. It's fuzzy memories. It's something I do for myself. It's one of the only things I do for myself. I know a lot of people who deal with addiction, <laughs> myself included, and Mark included, and a lot of folks, and maybe you or someone you know. And a lot of the party line that goes with it early on is, this is something I do for myself. I'm not hurting you. I'm not hurting anybody else. It makes me feel better. It's none of your business. Leave me alone. Um, the consequences of having a tight relationship with food can be varied. Some people turn into chefs, some people turn into food critics, some people become super morbidly obese, and some people develop eating disorders. It can spew a lot of different directions, depending on your twist and your quirk with it. The problem I have mostly with food is that, and it's one that's ongoing, like, I've dealt with the addiction, and I'm in a good place where I know how to deal with it. I've dealt with my bipolar disorder, and I have some skills. Today's a little wonky, but that's everybody. That's life. Um, and I have some skills and, and tools and some medicine that helps with that, too. The eating disorder stuff has been around the longest. So the behaviors are gone, but the thoughts stay around. I don't act on them, but it's hard not to feel crazy. Even if you're not acting that way, it's hard not to feel like not well. It's hard not to feel not well sometimes around food because it means so much more to me than it should. Now, by nature, I am the kind of person who everything means more to me than it should. Food doesn't just mean nourishment. Food means mother. Food means uh, love. Food means safety. Food means food in the fridge means I'm not broke. You know, food on the table means I'm, I'm provided for. Food as a gift means people care about you. It, it just means so much more than just fuel. You know, I was never taught fuel, you know, food is fuel that in that sort of way. It's never how it was presented. I didn't grow up in a house with overweight people. My dad had a belly, you know, but my sister and brother were very athletic, actually. My brother had a knee injury his junior year of high school, a bad one. But prior to that, they were very active and nobody was thin except me by the end. But it, it doesn't run in my family. They just don't think the same way about it. They don't feel the same way about it. Evidence of that going forward as an adult now, when the holidays come, I don't participate in, often don't participate, more often than not, in the religious part of the of the holidays that people do. Like Easter, Christmas, I mean, this year nobody is because of, you know, the COVID. But in years prior, I would stay home and cook. And I would be in the kitchen while everyone else went to mass. And then I would prepare the food and put it out. I like cooking, I like spending time with food, but again, it means so much more to me. It means more to me to make food and give it to people, too. It means, like, you're giving a part of yourself with it, you know? And I think a lot of cooks feel that way, too. You put yourself into your food, it's a craft, it's your art, and you give it to someone and you hope they like it. You give them that look when they're eating it, waiting for, waiting to see what they, they're gonna say. There's a look people give you if they like your cooking. Um... So where does this leave me now, like, as, as, an, as an adult approaching 40, um, being, it's, I'm not a picky eater, honestly. I'll eat pretty much anything, except for, uh, what? I, I'll, I'll eat almost anything, honestly. No creamsicles. No creamsicles. Because there's a memory attached to those, too. I don't remember, I was playing with the kid down the street when I was little. And I took a bite of one, and I think I vomited the same day, and that was, like, it. No more creamsicles. I don't know what we were playing. I don't know what game it was. I just remember the snacks. I remember the snacks. I remember the kid down the street's parents would order takeout. KFC, Chinese food, and they'd invite me to stay, and I'd call mom, and mom would say, no, you can't stay for dinner. Like, I was imposing, even though they may have asked. And, uh, I had to go home. So, I remember thinking... This is nice food. This is takeout food. This is good food. And, and they invited me to stay for it. And then my mom said, I can't have it. It made me feel like I wasn't, like, worthy of what, I, in my head, seemed like a treat, you know, that was being offered by somebody else. It kind of felt like, no, that's, that's not open to you. You don't, it's imposing. You're imposing even if they want, even if they've invited you. You need to come home. 
So I felt like just being denied that I felt like was a shot. You know, it's not just like, oh, no, not for dinner tonight. Well, maybe some other time. We'll see you. It was a bigger deal. It was a bigger deal because they were having Chinese takeout, which I loved, and we didn't get very often. You know, we grew up pretty working class. You know, we, we eat the food we have in the house, and, and that's it. You have a treat every once in a while, but but it's a treat, you know, and, and that's all it is. So now as an adult, what do I do? Um, I don't... <laughs> I usually do OMAD, the one meal a day type approach. For me, it's easier... And it, it's, it's a few, there's a few reasons I do it. One, I don't have to think about food all day because I can plan one meal. If I had to plan three meals, I think I would go nuts because I would start to become very obsessed with, well, what am I going to eat at this meal and the next one and the next one? I need enough protein. I need enough this. I need enough that. What, then I would feel compelled to cook three meals. I can't give my whole day to food, whether it's trying to avoid eating or whether it's eating all day. I, I just can't do it. I've dealt with my other, I hate to say demons, because they're just issues. You know, everyone has them. I'm I'm no saint or no hero just because I've lived through what I've lived through. I've, other people have lived through much more, you know, <laughs> than I have. But in dealing with the eating disorder behaviors and dealing with the food and dealing with everything like that, it still lingers. It still lingers now. The OMAD, like I said, I like because I don't have to plan as many meals of the day. It does satisfy the binge trigger for me um, because it is a lot of food in one sitting because I'm eating a day's worth of food pretty much within an hour. So it, that that limits it and that actually... Puts a, it puts a cap on time. I eat between now and now. And I can eat this much food between now and now. And I only have to think to plan one meal. So it might not be ideal. Um, it's nothing I've been recommended by a nutritionist, and I've seen half a dozen at least. No, more like a dozen. But it works for me right now. If that changes and it doesn't work for me anymore, I'll be willing to try something else that does. Right now, this is working to help me maintain my weight. I gained the COVID weight, but the OMAD's helping me maintain, maybe lose a pound here and there. But it takes my mind off of that. The first thing I got into when I stopped drinking was food. The first, I gained weight like that, like so fast, because I need something to help me go to sleep. I need something to help me numb out. I need something to help me... Um, just bury my head in the sand for a little while. I just need something to do socially, you know, instead of going to the bar, let's go to a restaurant. And I was replacing that whatever the alcohol was doing for me, I couldn't I couldn't use alcohol to do it anymore, and food slipped in. So then recovery was great, not drinking, not using, not going to jail, not burning bridges, and I'm working, and these things are good. But I also gained 40 or 50 pounds. Kind of like, oh, well, as long as I'm not dying of alcoholism, everything's fine. But then the weight caught up with me. The food obsession caught up with me. The, oh, well, I'm living a good life now. Um, also got into a relationship with Mark and that, you know, fat and happy thing kind of happened to me. I'm like, well, he, he loves me the way I am. So what the hell does it matter? Well, it matters if I can't walk four blocks to work and I can't breathe. And that's what it was coming to at the time. So I, it's so weird being married like engaged, going to be married to a chef because his preoccupations with food are very different than mine. Um, he, he likes food. He went into the culinary business. I like food. I had to go to a psychiatrist. <laughs> my diet tips go on most people's med would be on my medical chart, you know, rather than me putting together a book of I am thin and so can you. So, well, I'm sorry if this wasn't too, too much of a mukbang. I was more nibbling on a peanut butter sandwich the whole time. And I'm never picking peanut butter if I'm going to eat during a video again. My God. You know how they put the peanut butter on the gums of Mr. Ed and he would just like that? Bizarre. So, if you have anything to share, because this is kind of a private issue for some folks, I think it's a lot of people's guilty secret. Usually when, um, my, I, me, I, Steve's opinion, not the official opinion of even Mark, um, that when a person deals with food as an issue, whether it's they eat a lot or they're, they're like super, like 
people can see it. When food's your fix, people can see it. Now, you can say you're only eating 1,200 calories a day, but if a person's 400 pounds, barring some unique medical situation, they eat a lot. They can say whatever they want. And then a person who's extremely thin can make the same case. You know, oh, they have a tapeworm or something. It's possible. Um, or it's possible they just don't eat enough and they're trying to blow smoke up your ass. People's relationship with food is very private, I find. And behaviors around food are that are not healthy are so normalized. There's some of mine that are probably not healthy that I've normalized because I don't want to change them. And they'll change as time goes on and as I continue to hopefully get better. Um, like I said, my issues with food have had the longest and they're they're continuing to be the, the hardest to, to let go of. But thank you for indulging me and in, in my challenging myself to eat in front of people. I appreciate it. Um, I understand food is something probably a lot of people could relate to. Um, especially now with COVID, a lot of us have just blown up a little bit. People who've never had to deal with weight issues, maybe dealing with them. People who've never had to deal with mental health concerns, maybe dealing with them. Um, so fear not folks. I, I accept cookies. I accept cookies. It's okay. We'll be okay. If we're taking care of ourselves, if we're doing what we can to look after ourselves and we've gained a little weight, it's okay. I'm saying we because I gained a little weight and I need to feel like it's okay. <laughs> Pretty much. It'll come off. It'll come off. I've lost more weight than I've gained right now. And, you know, it's not a peanut butter sandwich and a half an apple in the middle of the day that's putting the weight on. It's my other choices I'm making that are that are doing it to me. So I just have to reprioritize as best I can, manage the feelings I have around food and using it as comfort and, and company. You know, is it an accident? I'm having a little mukbang on the day Mark works late. Maybe not, you know, probably not actually. So, well, thank you all for watching. If you have anything to share, please don't hesitate to comment below. Our comment sections tend to be pretty good and actually folks interact with each other and provide support for each other too. It's actually pretty slick. I like it there. Um, so do not hesitate to leave a comment below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put those below either. I've gotten a little better at getting active in the comment section. I repeat, a little better. Working back into it. So thank you for your patience with me. Thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the notification bell on your way out so you get the alerts when we go live and when we have a new video. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark or on Twitter. Our handle's at Smokey Steve A. Our email address and contact info is all listed below as well. Thank you again, and Mark and I will catch up with you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. This may have done more for me than it's done for you, so thank you for indulging me, and I will catch up with you all soon. Bye!